tēnā koutou, koutou e mātaki taki wai nei i tēnei uh, pāpā o mata ora uh, ki runga i tēnei o ngā whārangi, te koro wai o ngā ruahene, uh, kei ko nei mātou te ngā uri o ngā ruahene me ki e me i kaua tuki koutou katoa. O ti rā, uh, ko tēnei te pai o uh, te pai haumaru o tūkai awhitia e me i kaua tuki koutou katoa. Uh, ko te tūmanako kei te mau tonu koutou i ngā pai haumaru uh, tuarua o tēnei o, ngā, o te mate uruta. Uh, I hope everyone is safe and keeping well in their homes, in their kainga at this point in time. Uh, thank you all for joining us. As you can see, we have our, our Razzle Madaz crew here for you all, keeping you company on this Wednesday night at Te Whanau. Uh, so, as you can see next to me, we've got Matua Warren here to answer your questions. So everybody, please get questions in, and we have our rangatahi here who have questions that have come in to them uh, throughout the week since we joined you all last week. Uh, and a big mihi to everybody who tuned in. We had Super Saturday on Saturday at Te Iwi, um, and there was like over 2,000 people who got vaccinated on the weekend throughout Taranaki, so he mihi nui. Uh, we know we had Ngāti Rua nui down the road here who had their uh, pop-up vaccination clinic, and everybody was spread out throughout uh, Te Ati Awa, uh, Ngāti Mutinga, all sorts of places around Taranaki, so ka mihi. Uh, he mihi nui ki koutou i whakapau wera uh, ki te tuku tēnei kaupapa uh, ki te maunga nei. So, as I said, we have questions, okay? And we want to keep the momentum going, Fano. We want to get people coming into the vaccination clinics. We don't want that to stop. Super Saturday wasn't the be-all, end-all. It was one part of the process. Uh, so... We are going to let everybody quickly introduce themselves, just in case someone out there doesn't know who these people are. Um, so, Warren, ka tuku te rākau ki koe, ki te whakamoho atu ki te katoa. Ko wai koe, aua ahua tanga katoa. A tēnā koe te tuahini. A tēnā koe te tēnā tātou. Um, ko wai au, ko Warren Nichols ahau. Um, Privileged enough to be the Kaiwakiri Te Business Manager for Ngārui Hene Iwi Authority and our Hauora Social Services. Um, he uri ahau no Ngātiru Nui Ngārui Hene Taranaki Tūturu Hoki. Um, he no oana um, ki te Hauora i te kainga nei. Um, just privileged to be with such stunning rangatahi, been in this space and and just really having good korero with our huano. Um, ite tuahini te aurangi, thank you for facilitating e kaiwaka haere. Um, just beautiful. Tēnā koe, Warren. I don't think I got a choice, but I love it anyway, Fano. Uh, Ngai nei te rauna, ko koe kei raro iahau ki taku, uh, ki taku screen mea, nā reira ka tuku te rākau ki koe. Tēnā koe anti te arangi o te rā, tēnā koutou e te oanau, e mātakitaki mai nei, ki mātou, te peno me ki, uh, ko wai au ko tētahi oku wai wai, no ngā rauru kitai, no kaitahu, no ngā timani apoto, uh, no tūwhare toa, uh, tērā atu wai wai oku, no ngā rui hinerangi, no tāngo oe, te pakakoi, ngā tiruanui, uh, no te maunga tito e a kaiwhea mai, kaiwhea mai, uh, Ko wai au, ko te rauna tanga whakāra o Liam's Edwards. Tēnā koutou. Fuhu. Now that's an introduction, e te whānau. Uh, nā reira, uh, ki koe e, e Drew i nai nei mau e whakakapi tēnei wahanga o te uh, kiriata. Oh, tēnā koe. Um, ko Drew ahau, uh, he uri ahau no um, ngā Te rua nui, ngā rua hene, um, i te arua um, tai nui tūhui. Um, I work at Te Taura Hene ki te ao kōhanga in Altham. And yeah, tada. Tēnā koutou katoa. So we're really lucky because these are 
rangatahi have been keeping up with the times and have had people uh, messaging into them, asking them questions over the last week since our last panel. And so we're going to hand the time over to Drew and Tedona now to just um, chuck a couple of questions at Warren and see if Matua Warren can answer those questions. Uh, nā reira, Drew, we're going to go to you first. Hi, kia ora. Okay, so a lot of questions. The biggest one that I've been asked is what's the biggest, the high demand to be vaccinated? Like, why is it, yeah, why is it pushed so much for us to be vaccinated? That is a really cool question. And, you know, like, why we want people vaccinated is really quite simple. What's the alternative? The alternative is we repeat our history. Our history where many of our tupuna passed in the 1918 flu epidemic, the Spanish flu. We have mass graves all around Taranaki, all out in our own Urupa, and just sitting beside many of our papakainga, our kainga. People were buried just outside their whare. You know, we don't want to repeat that. We don't want to have the alternative. If we don't vaccinate, we will have mass infection and mass unwellness, critical unwellness. The increased number of people who won't survive will be dramatic. So there is no alternative. It is through vaccination that allows our bodies to protect themselves, protect each other as a huano, protect each other as a collective, as a hapu and an iwi, and protect our waka papa and our future generations. That is it. That's the driving force. Kia ora, tēnā koe, Drew. Thank you for that. We'll chuck it over to you now, uh, Te Raunatanga, and hear one of the questions that you've had come in. Kia ora. Um, one of the main questions, other than the question Pātai that Drew asked, was what are the long-term effects of the vaccine and do you know the long-term effects of the vaccine? Another really cool question. You know, this vaccine is new. Let's not kid ourselves. Let's be real about it. We're learning as we go to some degree. What is really awesome about this vaccine is it's the recipe coming into our body for our own immunity to build. The mRNA component disperses out of our body within days. So we're left with our own body making its own warriors. So when we think about the long-term effects, the long-term effects are largely that our warriors, if they're not used, will slightly diminish. Hence why we may need in the future a booster. And that is to keep our army ready and attention at attention, ready to fight when and if we become infected with this horrible narara. The um, long-term effects, we just have to keep really close eyes on that, really observing closely. Side effects within New Zealand, we are seeing minimal. It is natural to have the headache, the tiredness. Our body's creating an army for itself. We will be tired. That takes energy. With this particular vaccine, we are so far, we're not seeing any long-term effects, but we need to keep really observing, communicating, and if people are experiencing stuff, feeding that back. So we are absolutely monitoring and looking for ourselves um, as individuals, as Huano, as iwi, and as a collective of Māori. There you go. Good answer there too. Um, I've got a question for you, Warren. Have you been vaccinated? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, this. it's not just about role modelling. It's not just about showing leadership. This is about protecting my huano, protecting my ability to still contribute actively at a hapu level, at an iwi level. It is about our, my ability to continue to mahi and mahi for our people and 
not put our people at risk. There are multiple reasons why I did not hesitate in being vaccinated. But fundamentally, I want us all to get through this. I don't want to see anyone lost due to COVID. We are all important. This is a, if, everything we do is about a kaupapa. We are kaupapa driven. That takes a collective. This is not about individuals. Ticker toe. Um, Drew, you have you said you had another question. You actually you guys said you had quite a few questions, so I'll just keep it rolling. Um what are hold on, what is it? What are the effects of somebody that has never been vaccinated ever? Another really good question. You know, like it is okay not to have been vaccinated. And that is a personal choice that everyone is allowed to make. And often those choices have been made because vaccines historically are putting a foreign substance into our body. It is a live vaccine often that our body has never experienced. This vaccine is very different. And purposely, this is putting in the recipe for as an mRNA for our body then to create its own army. So we are not jeopardizing our stance in terms of not wanting live vaccines put in our body. We are not jeopardizing our value set around that. We are actually increasing our stance in a mana motuhaki way because we're allowing our own tinana to create its own fighting army. It is that simple. Nice. There you go, Fano. You know, I think we spoke about this before, eh, um, Warren, about our little team. Uh, and if it was a hockey game, if it was a hockey game and you were in the um, in the forwards, uh, then you're the first line of defence. And and I'll use I'll use Dona King as our example because she is the goalie in every hockey team. If it gets to Dona King. She's going to be mad at us, Fano. So that all of us in front of her have to have this um, this vaccine too. Is that sort of what you're saying? They get this vaccine and then it's just line of defence, 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 and then we're not going to get to uh, fire fire diner. Nice one, uh, Kia Kia Terona. Kia ora. So um, there's a lovely week I remember we talked about the the recipe of the vaccination. Can you speak further on that? Certainly. So it is the strand of DNA that is in the vaccine, and it is called mRNA. mRNA is purely a the mechanism in which instructs our own body how to make... Um, more cells basically. And so it then allows our body to replicate that and memorize that and therefore it creates its own army. The mRNA, once our body receives that, it then disperses out of our body within days. You know, I'm talking like two days. It's not a long period at all. So there's often a lot of fear around substance, you know, whatever we're gonna be injected with that it's gonna be in us and we can be tracked by it and and all these sorts of alarming concerns which are real concerns none of us would ever want that but all that's going in is the strand of mrna and of course it's in a solution to keep it active otherwise it's not going to do its job but that is all dispersed out of our body within days it disintegrates itself um, mrna naturally in our body does not survive long. We reproduce that naturally all the time. So hence why if a booster is to be considered moving forward in our COVID response rollout, it may well be worthwhile because over time, our mRNA diminishes, our army will diminish if it's not used. You know, we don't know how long, it is a matter of when, probably not if COVID enters our borders, so we want to make sure our army is the most fittest it can be. We've got the most um, participants in that army. You know, 
we want the strongest army to be possible. So we do need to think about how we maintain that moving forward. But for the here and now, the two doses that we receive give us a strong enough army for a good duration. And again, there'll be learnings as we, as we move through this in the coming months and years around the timing of any booster. It's not like we're gonna need it every three months, but it may be that every couple of years, or, or maybe that might even lengthen out. We won't know till we walk that journey and monitor, but we need to keep our army the strongest it can be so that when it's needed to defend, just like we would have in our old par sites when we were being attacked, we wanted our, our tauwa to be the fittest they could be, always alert and ready for that entourage coming through and ready to respond like this is no different. That's the simplest analogy that we need to understand. Is that Kia enough? <laughs> yes. So I'm just going to move to the um, the top of it. We've got quite a few questions coming through, so we're going to go down in order of them coming through. So I'll show you this one that came through in the beginning. Um, and this is from Riti Hiawala. Uh, kia ora, Warren Ma. There is a lot of misinformation around about how the vaccination is approved for us here in New Zealand, as this seems to be a big fear factor for some of our under un determined yes yeah, so some of us who aren't quite sure um can you talk to that warren absolutely you know like we've got generations that now are very technolo technological savvy it savvy research is a common practice for us in our lives now so we want to know what's going on so you know the the basic thing is that when this vaccine was rolled out and the research was starting to be done you know it's all very medically orientated it's all in language that just confuses us but more so that there are certain tick boxes that must go it must go through to be proven to be safe the reality is that in new zealand here we've already had I think the best research possible and that has been the rollout. When we look at the New Zealand rollout, even post the approval process, that tells us how effective it is. We look at our hospitalisation rates, we look at our Wano across the country who have tested positive, unvaccinated is just right up there. I'm talking way over 85% of cases are unvaccinated. On the, if you flip that over, what does that tell us from a research perspective? It tells us vaccination protects us because if we didn't have the vaccination, what would you know? Those numbers would be ten times and or more. And I think getting a medicine approved is very vigorous. It's very science orientated, but often in ways that don't fit with our value set as Māori. Not, they don't come from a Mā Tauranga value set. So I think it's about live research. I think it's about actually what is happening right here and now in New Zealand and, and using that to inform us moving forward. Ticker, ticker toe. Nice answer. Um, Drew, you have another question? I do. Um, what vaccine is being used here in New Zealand? Excellent. So we have got the Pfizer vaccine. It has been the only one rolled out across the country that everyone is using. It is a two-dose vaccine. And uh, can the second dose can be anything from three to six weeks after. That's to maximise build our strength, get that army the way we want it. It's the one vaccine that I think Aotearoa has made a really good choice over because it is allowing our the mRNA to allow our bodies to create its own defence. It's not putting an artificial defence within us. So I stand by the choice made by our government of the day. 
I think of all the vaccines that are available worldwide, this was the best choice. Specifically from a, a, a Mātauranga Māori space, from a Wairua space, it uh, allows us to remain intact and not have foreign substances overriding our own natural processes. Mm, tēnā koe. Uh, Kei a koe te rauna? Kia ora. So most of our rangatahi are wondering whether or not they'll have to be vaccinated to enter festivals like home growing next year, te matatini, pia, tabanaki tū mai next year. Will they have to have vaccinations to be able to enter those events? Ka pai te raunatanga. I can see how that would be at the minds of so many of our young people. You know, they are social. They want to be together as a collective. But the reality is that is the case. For us to return to any normal living, to participate in truly collective events like um, all those things you, you, you commented on, vaccination is likely to be a requirement. The, this Delta virus particularly, and there may be other versions that get put upon us as this moves through. We might see other versions of the coronavirus, but even just this Delta virus spreads so rapidly, it is very infectious. And when what comes with that is the impact it has on us if we get infected. It gets us very unwell very quickly. Vaccination protects us. It won't stop us necessarily been in contact and, and getting the virus, but it will allow our body to deal with it really quickly and prevent us getting very sick, ending up in hospital. We want to be able to get back to playing sport. We want to get back to going to all those cool concerts, all those really cool vibes and just hanging out together and having those wonderful social occasions. This is one of the tactical ways in which we can get back to normal living. Kia ora. We've got some more questions coming in from the feed. Um, and this is from Paula Carr. What advice do you have for the many employers who are considering their position and message to their employees about vaccination? That's a really cool question again, and one that is facing every employer across this country. And we've already seen that health and education are going to have that imposed very quickly in the coming months. The reality is, this isn't about us as individuals, it's about the collective. And if we are front serving, if we are in roles where we are engaging with Huano, with our communities, we have a responsibility to provide safety for all staff, ourselves, and our customers, our huano, our communities. What better way to do that than to ensure our teams are fully vaccinated? It gives teams and individuals the ability to have comfort that they're not going to be compromised in work. They're not suddenly be going to be off sick for long periods of time and suddenly no wage or their whole circumstance being changed. You know, we're used to living in now in a very dependent state that requires money coming in the door. Everything costs. Our resilience has sort of gone by the wayside to some degrees because we have all the mod cons, we have all the conveniences that all requires money so from an employee perspective from a worker it is about safeguarding our jobs we can stay in employment because we're protecting ourselves but even bigger than that we're protecting the community we're serving they are not at risk of entering or coming into contact when we have a service to offer or a product to offer and i think that's about how we navigate that space as employers the conversations that need to be had. It is an ongoing conversation. It is about really having understanding with each other and just progressing through that. You know, I think of the 
days gone by. You know, we wānanga and we didn't stop wānanga until we got a resolution. We didn't just turn our backs and give up on a kaupapa. We kept talking until we found a resolution and that took compromise. So sometimes I think this COVID is about us as a people returning to our kaupapa, returning to our tikanga and actually embracing some of our old practices and bringing that into the now, bringing that into the modern four and letting that drive our thinking, even in an employer-employee arrangement. Yeah, nice. Um, good food for thought, good question there. Um, Drew, what are the rangatahi saying? The biggest one that I have had um, coming in the last couple of days is if it's, if, why am I sick? Why do you feel lethargic after you've had it? Like, if I'm feeling like this now, is this how the virus is going to make me feel if I'm to get it? Awesome. And I think I touched on this slightly before. Once we're vaccinated, straight away, the mRNA initiates our body's response in making its army, building its own immunity, getting those antibodies established. It's a whole army we're building. We can't feel it, we can't touch it, we don't get that sense, but within us, that takes a lot of energy. That takes a lot of effort. So yes, tiredness is a natural thing and and i don't think there would be probably anyone that's vaccinated who said they haven't been a little bit tired because our body is actually working really hard to build its army that is a natural thing that will occur it's not a result of the vaccine it's a result of our body doing what we want it to do building its army that should only last a few days because that in, after dose one a few days work and our initial army is built after dose two, it's adding on to that army to strengthen it and build it. That feeling of um, tiredness, being lethargic, slight headachey, that should all resolve within days from both doses. Unlike the vaccine, if we come into contact with COVID, we're going to get sick in a very different way. We're going to get infected. We'll have infection rapidly growing within us, that starts to take a toll on how our body can cope. Straight away, our immune response kicks in and it needs all the energy it can to fight that virus. And at times, the virus is, this virus is so strong and, and such a powerful thing that our own response if we're unvaccinated isn't strong enough to overcome it. So all our energy is focused and it still isn't enough. Therefore, this bug gets down into our lungs, it infects our lungs, it infiltrates, takes over it, breathing becomes extremely difficult because it's taken over all that area of our lungs. That is why people end up so sick on ventilators and, and ultimately die because they no longer have space in their lungs to breathe. It is like a suffocation. When we're vaccinated, this bug doesn't even get to our lungs because as soon as it enters and it sits at the back of our throat, it doesn't get a chance to go down our windpipes to our lungs because our antibodies that we've built up as an army are already fighting it and getting rid of it before it gets established. That's the key. I hope I have yes. answered that clearly yes. enough. That was very clear. <laughs> Fano, if you were wondering what's going to happen, you just got it in a nutshell right then. Um, te no it's about anō. keeping the conversation real, isn't it? That's like, right. That's right, Fano. Uh, we've got some real all going on right now. Okay, koe, te rauna. Some real corridor, I'd say. Tēnā koe matua mō taua whakautu ki tērā pātai. Um, some of the rangatahi I know that I have been talking to, they're really oha of having to wear a mask because they've been vaccinated and they don't, oh, it's not that they don't believe, but they're wondering, they're thinking, why would we wear masks 
if other people aren't wearing masks themselves. So what is the protection of masks or what is the value of wearing a mask on the kanohi? You know, number one, this virus spreads through our mucus, through our saliva. As we talk, as we breathe, if we were to be under a certain light or a certain intensified microscope, you would see all the particles that come out and spread, even just as we talk. So, again, we can't see this stuff. We can't touch it and feel it. So we don't actually understand it, but it's real. And so a mask allows two things. It allows us to prevent, if we have COVID, or actually any other respiratory disease, even a simple pneumonia, chest infection, bronchiolitis, even a throat, strep throat, which can spread really clearly, really quickly. A mask prevents us from being able to spread that out to others. So that's number one. It protects a barrier from us infecting other people. Number two, though, it acts as a barrier to inhale what is being spread by other people. Hence why we social distance, because that can sit in the air for so long that we could just be walking through unknowingly because we can't see the stuff. So the only way to really prevent is to face cover. And that way we have the double action, prevent ourselves infecting others or others infecting us. Masks will be, I think, a part of our norm for some time to come. It is a reality. But if that is a small token to return to normality, to do all the cool things that rangatahi love to do, get to those concerts, have fun activities, play our sports, be together as Juano, be at the pa, then is wearing a mask so bad? So true. Oh, yeah, there you go. Just come in with that hard hitter right there. It's like the answer to the question, but the question is in the answer, right? <laughs> I love I love what you're doing here. I love what you're doing here, Warren. Too much. Okay, so we've got so many questions coming in from the floor. It's also uh, from the live stream. It's awesome. So, Baidu Pui Nuku, uh, Nuku, she is asking, uh, or she is saying, Tēnā koutou, and this is for you, Matua Warren, um, do we have any stats of the Māori vaccination or or not in Taranaki, South Taranaki or um, Ngāruahine? Okay, how do we, do we have, what's, what's, our, what's our vaccination um, status at the moment for Māori? Let's go with Taranaki or South Taranaki. Let's go with Either Taranaki, either. yep. Let's start yep, at the cool. Taranaki level. And for Māori, our stats are still low. We still have this equity gap. Our, our second dose vaccination rate is sitting still way under 50%. We are trying really hard to improve that. It's also about trying to access enough good information and I suppose stats, the data, that actually allows us to see right down at a community level into what we call mesh blocks. And mesh blocks are basically groups of streets within, a, say, a township or suburbs that allow us to drill down to that level and say, actually, where are the pockets of unvaccinated? Where do we need to actually take our service to and reach inside of? You know, like models of health that require Huano to come to clinic that require the burden to sit on Huano's shoulders to always access. That's what's wrong with our whole health system. We want to see that reversed. And I think that has been the core strategy of Ngāruihini Hini thus far, is that we are reaching out into our community and being mobile and coming to you. It is about how we lift those percentages is to be in alongside our Huano not awaiting for them to come to us all the time. 
Kia ora. Um, because we've got so many questions coming through on the um, chat, Fado, Drew, I'm going to leave it up to you to um, speak to the or announce the question that, uh, that Ringitia Mako has asked. Tēnā koe, Ringitia. Asking for a friend, what if you are scared of needles? That's a good question. Absolutely, that's a good question. And believe you me, we're all scared of needles. Like, nobody likes them. But actually, you know, I think that's about creating an environment where it's okay to feel scared. It's okay to feel anxious. It's about having a really safe environment that you are well supported, that it can take as long as it takes. There is no rush. Let that Korowai Aroha be wrapped around you and whether that be conversation, whether it just be having somebody safe sitting beside you through it, holding your hand, just talking you through it, whether it's bringing a Huano member with you to make it happen, look, you're in control of this, not us. We want to be as agile and as flexible to meet your needs and fear is a really real concern and we all hold that fear we just display it in different ways so you know it's about just reaching out and letting us know you're a little bit anxious and we will then let you be totally in control and and decide how you want to progress progressing is the key even if that's progressing to a conversation even if that's progressing to say actually what would it take for you to feel comfortable and get you through this. Whatever that is, we will strive really hard to make that happen because you are what's important. It's not about us. Kia ora. I'm just going to pop up a question that's coming from Lola there. Te rauna mau e pānui tēra. Tēnā koe anti Lola, kā tēnē. Nā reira, tōna pātai. Ages under 16 years, do they need parental consent to be vaccinated? If so, do they arrive with a letter of proof if the parent can't attend with them? Or how is parental approval proof? This is a really interesting one. Now, currently under COVID rules, anyone 12-year-old and up and under 16 does not require parental consent. 16 year and older, obviously, you're able to consent yourself. But for us as Huano, it's really important we don't cause more trauma, more stress, more upset, or just raru within Huano. So already we've had several rangatahi reach out to us at various times, at different times, saying they really want to be vaccinated, but maybe their parents either don't agree or they just in some cases, they've said their parents just can't be bothered getting in the car and bringing them. So we've certainly given information that they can consent for themselves. But actually, what we want to do, first of all, is come have the conversation as a Huano to again wānanga and get resolution and have a Huano approach. Isolating and creating raru is not good for Huano. We don't want to create havoc and then walk away, and a Huano is left to deal with that. You know, this is about supporting Huano, uplifting Huano. And yes, we need to respect rangatahi choices within that, but we're really keen to help facilitate the conversation with parents, guardians, responsible adults, so that it's actually a mana enhancing process and not a disabling process. Kia ora. Um, Lola, I think that answers your next question too, which was at what age do they not need parental um, consent? But she's got another good question here too. Um, when parent consent is not needed, who is responsible if there is a conflict of interest or an allergic reaction? True. You know, like... Reactions do happen. Um, fortunately, we've seen very minimal of those to any large degree. But naturally, that is more reason why we want to have a mana enhancing conversation as a Huano, because 
none of us want to be ringing a responsible adult and say, oops, sorry, your child's just suddenly felt crook, crook, felt sick as a result of a vaccine or any other process that we do. It's about how we structure this from the beginning. It is about setting Juano up to be successful, not dividing Juano. That mitigates any need or concern for that. If we go about this in the right way, in a mana enhancing manner, then we should not ever need to be in a position where we have to have that situation and respond to Juano and say, oops, we're in a bad situation now. Can we talk now? But late for the talk, the corridor needed to happen up front. Uh, um, and just a mihi to everybody who's tuning in right now and keeping all these questions pumping. It's like we're all sitting in the same room having a corded or whānau. Um, uh, yes, okay. Ngā wai, tēnā koe, ngā wai. Anei he, uh, he korero, he pātou mai i a ngā wai. Hernandez Walden, mihi mahana ki a koutou, he pātou tāku, a whānau Māori only participating in vaccinations at our marae pop-up clinics. Largely, our Nāruahini response has been very purposeful in targeting Nāruahini uri. Marae pop-ups were about, first and foremost, bringing a service to our people reducing that equity gap, the difference between the whole of community vaccination rate and our low vaccination rate, giving our people to have something that's delivered in a more meaningful, deliberate manner that feels good, feels safe, feels comfortable, that has a whole lot more manakitanga wrapped around it, that is based on the value set of us as a people, that is deliberately set up for that reason. It's not to say if other community members, non-Māori attend that we would turn, we would not turn them away, but we are deliberate in our action to A1, prioritise a Nārui hini, then any other, you know, we have a manakitanga responsibility to other iwi who live in our rohi, as we expect of them for our people who live in their rohi. So we want to embrace, this is deliberate, but again, we would not turn anybody away. Kia ora. Uh, another question that has come in from Maria Drew. Maui Pānui. Kia ora, Maria. Tēnā koto, just a quick pātai about being hapu and getting the vaccine. In my whakaro, I feel that a lot for a little one to take is their research or a corridor on the effect that it may have on the baby. Beautiful partai and so real for us. We will always be concerned about our mokopuna, just as we are for our pākeke, pāhake. You know, like the reality is... Um, this has been another really good New Zealand observation, the amount of hapu mama who have been vaccinated and followed through for the delivery of their baby and observing closely the, the pipi after birth. And what we're seeing in, in our research in New Zealand, and there was a recent release just a couple of weeks ago, that our babies are being born with a natural immunity with, with mama being vaccinated in that hapu state, fully vaccinated, baby is being born, our pepe are having a natural immunity. They're not, potentially not needing vaccination themselves. Maybe in years to come, they may need a booster as they get older because our army loses its strength over time, but they are consistently being born with a natural immunity. That's got to be huge. That's got to be great. That's got to be number one. We're not seeing side effects. We're not seeing any issues so far on developmental delays, on um, cognitive development, on reduced milestones being met. 
It is still early in its stage of research and those PP will be monitored moving forward, but signs are all looking really great. Um, I certainly encourage Hapu Mama to consider it um, based on that, that, that our pepe, our future generations may have a much better response to this COVID than we have in our generations moving forward. Kia ora. Nei rā he pātai mau e tuku e te rauna. Kia ora. Um, before I just answer that question, I refer him back Oh, sorry. Before I say that question, referring back to the Pātai from Auntie Maria before, I know three cousins who are hapu at the moment, two of my first cousins and another whanaunga from afar who have both, they've, oh, they've all got their vaccines and so far so good. Just the hokaro. Um, Muki of Tukinga Kōrero or Roxanne Williams Tai, tēnā koe. My question is, how do you feel about the kōrero of our wahine no longer being fertile? Should we be worried? Look, we should always be worried about that because, you know, when we think of our role of mana tāne, mana wahine, it is about that next generation. Ne? So, yeah, those are real concerns and we should be worried. However, this vaccine, this Pfizer vaccine that we're using in Aotearoa, that we're using here at home, is not showing any impact on fertility for either our tāne or our wahine. It is not showing any impact on ability to conceive. In fact, again, we're seeing that once conceived, we're getting much better outcomes for our pipi being born with their natural immunity. Um, you know, in saying that, there are lots of reasons that wahine or tāne have fertility concerns. So we do need to keep watching and observing, but there is no signs that the Favisa vaccine has got any correlation to poor fertility. And the reason being, let's just add to that a little bit, if I may, sorry, te aurangi. The reason being is that it's, again, it's the mRNA solely coming into our body. It leaves straight away in the first few days, leaving our own body to only make from that recipe that's imported into us, making our own army of fighters for this vaccine. No fighters for anywhere else. It's not producing fighters for any other part of our body to target any other virus or organ or, or process of our body. It is purely directed and targeted at the coronavirus. Kia ora. Um, got one coming in from Fire Veronica Howe Foreman for us all. How do Rangata'i book in for the second vaccination? Cool question. And you know, this goes across for any Huano. Rangatahi any age band, you don't even need to book. Come to our clinics because actually you can just rock up on the day. You know, life's chaotic enough for us all. We're all pressured in time. There's enough stuff happening every day. Sometimes we wake up and think, actually, where am I meant to be? You know, that's just normal life. So we want to make this as easy as possible. So find out where our clinics are. Let us give you a choice of clinic and you rock up, we'll look after you, but please, you don't need to book. Your lives are important, not ours. We're working around you. Um, did you hear that, Fano? Our lives are not important. Only yours, nah, jokes. Hey, um, Fano, thank you so much for tuning in tonight and for all of those questions. Um, it feels really good when you're in the panel and you're able to get questions coming in and um, shoot back with some really good answers. And all of those questions that came in are going into um, the draw for those who are eligible. Um, we're going to go into a draw uh, for a $100 um, Prezi voucher. Um, and first I want to mihi to Ro Maxwell, tēnā koe, um, Ete, ete tuning in with us. 
Um, and I'm just going to read out something that Will Edwards has uh, chimed in with too. Oh, hey, te tanga, I know one of your first cousins that's hapu. Is your other <laughs> her first cousin on your mum's side? Maybe you should PM the answer. Oh, and does this question get me in the jaw for the prize? We will have to go to the secret panel and decide on whether that goes in the jaw for the prize or not, Will. <laughs> I do see that there are some sort of COVID sentiments to that question, but I'm not quite sure if it fits the criteria. Na reira, ai rō, kei te tautoko ai o kōrero, no connection turn, turn you away, Māori or mainstream, ai kei te tika rawa atu tērā. Um, Warren, I'm going to uh, just ask you a question about what's happening tomorrow in the vaccination space for us here in Ngāruai Hene. What can we expect? Oh, absolutely. Cool. Yes, tomorrow is another one of our pop-up clinics. This time, though, we're not at a marae. This time, we're right in the middle of Tahawara at the Te Kurawai o Ngāruai Hene Tari, right on the main street there. Um, Again, we are operating from 10 till 3. No appointments needed. Please just rock on in, even if that's just for a conversation. It's really important people are informed. We will take as long as we need to take to share really good information and let you take the time to feel comfortable or in a place where you feel ready. If you're feeling anxious, if that fear is there, let us know and we will do whatever you want to make you comfortable. Of course, you know, we wouldn't be Ngāru Hini without our manakitanga. So we've got sweet Aggie's coffee cart, you know, all free. We've got good kai for you while you're waiting your 15 minutes after the vaccination. We want to have an enjoyable time, the whanauna tanga time. You know, I look back at some of our clinics and Juano we've vaccinated right at the beginning of the clinic is still there at lunchtime because it's the one time they've caught up with everybody and having really good conversation. That's what we yeah. want, a really cool vibe. This is a safe place for you to come, so please just rock on up. Don't forget, though, we've got the competition going where the, there is going into a draw for either a new iPhone or a Galaxy. Who doesn't need that? Like, yay. <laughs> and what's most Me. important is, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you've got Tamariki who would love it, Te <laughs> Um What's most important, though, is just walk in. You know, we if you're sitting on the fence and not sure, just come and have that cup of tea. Come and have a kōrero. We want to it all with you. No obligations and no judgments. It's not about that. It's about answering concerns. It's about giving good information. And just remember to all stay safe, look after each other. You know, we are in this together. It's not going away anytime soon. We need to manaki one another and look after each other. Kia haumaru te no o whanau. Kia ora mai. Kia ora. We've got one last question coming in from Lola, and I think it's important. Drew, if you want to read that out for everybody, please. Kia ora, Auntie Lola. If we are wanting rangatahi ages 12 years and older, then why are not having pop-up clinics at school? Why are we not having pop-up clinics at school? Yeah, really good last question. Great. Um, you know, sadly... Um, schools have a responsibility to inform. Um, but they also have a, a neutral stance. I, you know, it's this is a Juano corridor. This is a, a collective uh, kaupapa. This is about protecting ourselves, first and foremost, as Ngāru Ehini, as Māori. This is about our collective benefit. Schools, from my mind, could be a really cool way of reaching into groups of rangatahi, but we run a really big risk from a value set as Māori of creating disharmony within Huano. We want to, again, like I said earlier, have a mana-enhancing approach. Please, we're happy to reach into schools and identify Huano, 
but I think we shouldn't create environments where we're isolating and putting rangatahi at risk of disconnection from their huano or creating raru within. Uh, that's an unsafe place. Tēnā koe. Tēnā koutou. E mihi ana ki koutou katoa, uh, kwa whaiwa ki te whakarungo ki tēnei o ngā, uh, ngā pai me ki. Um, I just see that um, that Ropata is just saying that there is some happening in Wellington, but Warren, you're so right on the approach for ours. Um, ana, ye e here ne ki tato mato o ngā rua hene ne, kutira to mato ake ara i te nei wa. Uh, we're doing our own thing in ngā rua hene, our own great thing that is um, about uh, protecting the the maunga as well. Our all of our whānau whānui. Uh, nā reira, just a massive mihi out to everybody out there who's tuned in tonight. Um, it's been awesome having you all uh, comment and ask us questions. And it's looking like this is going to become a regular gig with our uh, rangatahi, uh, uh, our rangatahi hosts, actually. Yeah, our rangatahi hosts who are coming in with the kōrero straight from our rangatahi as well. Uh, and then, oh, well, me... Oh, I'm a rangatahi too, actually, I feel, um, with our pahake over here, <laughs> answering all the questions. Uh,